back here. Uh, um, so yeah, I'm very proud of the, you know, the just the grip and you know the resilience that we showed. I mean, it was a pretty dramatic match. You know, obviously, um, you know, yellow card, red card. Um, you know, to be down, I think, 12 men at one stage and to uh, to keep the bulls out um, at that time um, showed a lot of character by the boys and just really proud of um, any of our leaders out in the pitch, you know, the calmness that they showed. And so, yeah, it was, uh, yeah you're right. I mean, the result, you know, either team could have won that tonight. Um, we were lucky it got over, but I was just really proud of, of what you've just brought up there big time. Uh, yeah, uh, a guy like James Spencer obviously had a had a hell of a game. Uh, does that sort of has he advanced himself in your thinking for the UFC, or have you always is he always you know been quite strong in your plans? Oh yeah, no, James is, uh, and it's hard to single anyone out in an effort like that. But yeah, you know, James has been um, you know just steadily building his game um, the last you know twelve months, and um, you know he's a uh, uh, you know, great sharks man. Um, you know he he's just passionate about the jersey, and um, you know he's um, he's an action man. You know he when he says he's going to do something, he'll do it. You know, and and that's the that's the type of characters that we uh, we need in our team. Yeah. And um, Kevin Krobler, is he working on his um, <laughs> disappearing himself magically from? <laughs> From, uh, uh, I mean, from the from the joy of the Nyakani tribe straight away to that. I mean, you, you, that oh, must have been a bit of a down yeah, for you. No, I mean there, there was some a lot of um, and and you know we've been working on our what we call our pressure plays um, at training. You know, and uh, you know we had a we had a we let ourselves down in some of our pressure plays tonight. You know, and that that was you know you've highlighted one, but there are others as well that we could have been way smarter uh, under pressure. Uh, and there's some good stuff too. You know, so. It's just something that we we're working on uh, with the team to make sure that you know they understand you know if they when they're under the pump to be able to relieve pressure everyone be able to nail their role um, and you know there was a moment there that uh, Gigi probably want to want to forget particularly if uh, if, if Butter had kicked the, the penalty but luckily uh, had a little bit of luck there. Good. It seems like. The you get the whole thing right. Was there EPC on and everything? You waited, 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 and started before you got what you wanted to get. The curry chop the same. Is, there a, is that a recipe that you follow, or is it just coincidence? <laughs> I'll just say coincidence. <laughs> no, look, there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. Um, you know, um, yeah, we've, we're trying to build this squad without our spring box, um, and we've made some um, good shifts, um, but it's not just about you know making the squad a little bit stronger, but it's also around um, you know like just the things that you know you talked about there, Ken. You know, just around our you know our resilience and our our character, and you know, the Bulls have had that and got that. You know, this time last year I sat in a press conference and we just got you know big, big hiding from them. You know, so we there was a fair bit of catch up to do, and I hope to. You'll, everyone will see that we're starting to close the gap um, in that space. Um, the rugby is the one thing, isn't it? But the how we the fight that we need to show in, in, in our contests, if we want to come up, come out on top of them, then we've got to show that fight for 80 and tonight showed you know 100 minutes. Now, a little bit of luck might go along that way, but you know the team that's prepared to fight um, the longest picks up that some of that luck and. Um, we weren't in that same. We weren't in that space last year. We were, we were, a, we were a team that um, that the jersey could be proud of, and now we're starting to show a little bit of that now, which is which is pleasing. So we're on the right track. You know, the Bulls have had it. Jake bought and <coughs> there. They've bought that in over the last three years. We're we're hopefully starting to close the gap in that space. And next weekend, I mean, the Lions had a. Difficult match as you did, but also played brilliant rugby. You played brilliant rugby. Are you going to change anything? Or <laughs> more we'll of the best and more UFC players? Yeah, look, um, I mean, yeah, 
the reward for for not winning would have been a week off and would have given us time to pay for a tour and uh, and and, uh, and the, if we'd lost and now we've won we don't get that reward so now we've got to prepare for a final um and um you know it's something that the boys um these boys will cherish just like the bulls if they go up tonight uh, it's a you know you know make too many finals in your in your career as a as a player uh, or a coach you know so you've got to cherish every one um so we'll just build accordingly through the week um we'll have to put in um, a plan after the game next week around because uh, we leave on monday for ireland uh, so we'll have to have a plan around you know our well-being see how, who's fit who's not fit um, so it's a big week in terms of our planning and uh, but we'll just we'll have to give the boys a couple of days off just to get over this as a massive game at altitude you know 100 minutes um so um, there's a fair bit of recovery needed to do to get get ourselves right for the, for the weekend and obviously looking at you know picked up a couple of injuries as well tonight so um yeah a lot of work to do this week thanks coach we've got those competencies that the bulls really make the most out of um also that kick from your person at the last minute of the game, didn't go over. Was that for you the moment where you knew that you might just have this one? Or the in your favor? No, yeah, not really. I mean, those are like those are the pressure plays that they'll probably look at and go, if we'd nailed that, you know, um, you know, now the they're the plays that we look at, we go, we, we potentially were a little bit lucky, you know, where our scrum was under the pump. Um, yep, there was a moment there where they could have won it. And that's the that's the game, you know. Um, um, but yeah, there was no real stage of the game that I sat comfortably in my seat. Uh, I actually didn't know the rules, you know. Lionel had to kick the, to kick it because we had more tries, but I, I didn't actually didn't know the rules. And I think there was a little bit of that going on in terms of the rules. There was a fair bit of um, chat on the sideline around the red card replacement after the twenty minutes, and the officials didn't really know what was going on there as well. So I think it must have been the first time it's happened in the Curry Cup. Um, so, yeah, there was a fair bit going on. So I don't think either coach, uh, or, or me, were probably feeling comfortable at any stage. It was just one of those matches. And, and how pleased have you been to see over the course of the of the campaign the, the nice balance between some younger players uh, stepping up and some players that have been in and around the fringe squad of the North Sea also stepping up in the Curry Cup setting? Yeah, and that's the that's the beautiful thing about the Curry Cup, how they've got it structured now. You know, the URC guys have to rest and get a preseason in, and the youngsters take over. Um, you know, if you've got an injury and a guy, a URC player that's out for a long time, he might play a bit more Curry Cup rugby and getting ready for the the URC. And then you know, the the Bulls like us have had the same strategy: use the use this stage as as uh, preseason games because um, you know we know what's in front of us now—a massive season. Um, so yeah, the the, the you know the, the you know ultimately at the end of the day, whatever happens on Saturday, uh, if we win the trophy, great. If we don't, well, we've got to prepare ourselves for a, a, a massive season, and um, you know, uh, you know, if we we've got to go on tour and we've got to do well, um, and the risk of 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 the Curry Cup final is that we pick up more injuries and and it stresses us for the tour, so. There's pluses and there's definitely minuses. It's not ideal, you know. Um, but if ideal preparation now would be for me to go home and build, 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 get this team ready for a tour, but we've got another game, so it's not a it's not ideal in that terms. But like we said last week, we respect Curry Cup because of its tradition, and we like the Bulls tonight. We went all out to try and to try and get to the stage. So now that we're here, you know, we, we might as well go and do our best and try and win it. And lastly, for my side, um, having won the PCR um, in the previous campaign, how important for you as, a, as an individual, as well as for the union, is it for, for you to go over the line, get over the line for um, the Sharks in the Curry Cup, just to show that the, the, the winning culture is back and to send out a message going into your RC campaign? Uh, yeah, I don't put the team under pressure like that. I don't put myself under pressure like that. You know, I'll just focus on Monday, what I need to do. and. Tuesday and then Wednesday and Thursday and, and I'll, I'll just uh, go about my business during the week like I normally will with the coaches. Um, can't forget that you know JP's done a great job with uh, MB and uh, Mike Vells. They, they, they started this and um, I'm sure JP's going to be with me next week, you know, because um, he deserves a, 
if we do get over the line, he deserves a, a big part in it. And that's been another nice little growth, isn't it? Three three coaches have gone and done really well with the group. And, um, but no, I don't. I don't. I, I the bit what Ian asked me earlier is is the key for me. We we know if we build through our character and build our resilience and all the things that are really important. We know we've got talent. We can win games. And last year we didn't have that belief or those types of systems that were in place because I just started. But now we're starting to we're starting to get there. Um, I hope those words don't come back and bite me in the bum uh, a little bit later. But you know that's what you're seeing, and so it's it's good in that space. Mm. John, you again mentioned now the, the, the character and what that goes to leadership, and maybe the the biggest difference between the two teams today was um, the different uh, decisions that leadership made on the, on the field. I mean, Will butchered so much points. And, uh, and on the other side, your leadership just that, that never say die attitude. Just a few words on, on, on Vincent Tuka and his, and his, his future as a leader. <laughs> yeah, Vincent's been a lovely surprise, you know, as a leader. You know, um, and you know the, the nice thing about this game, you learn, you learn all the time. So the Bulls will look at their their performance and they'll take some really good learnings out of them, which will hold them in good stead um, for the for the for their coming games. But um, you know, but, you know, I was really happy with the fact that um, I was really happy for the fact that Vincent has got us there because he deserves it. He's been um, excellent. You know, his game personally has grown. And uh, with that's why I gave him the opportunity to lead. And Andre, there with his calmness and, and experience, helps Vincent a lot. Um, I wasn't over happy with some of the, like the some of the decisions that and execution of some of our stuff either. You know, we kick a ball, we for a kickoff line off when you fix the ball dead, gives him a scrum back and a halfway. You know, we've got to nail those moments. So, you know, Gigi, like I say, talked about didn't nail his moments. So, it wasn't perfect either. But yeah, it'll. It'll be nice for me to sit back and have some chats to the boys around, you know, why did we do that and what was a call there and you know, chat about because you really just, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there was half time, there was the end of the 80 minutes and then there was half time at 10 minutes and we were behind and, you know, there, there was some, there'll be some great stuff to download <clears throat> around, you know, who was doing the chat and what was said. And then, then just about that one, probably, I mean, um, you made it mistake at, 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 at the end, but. Um, also, his leadership in the line out and his experience there, uh, you, you took away a lot of momentum from the, from the line out. Yeah, we pinched a couple that are really crucial, um, and that was great. You know, Vincent in front of the line out. You know, Gigi's a smart operator, you know, and he, uh, um, you know, he would have kept uh, Ethan Best, uh, the young under 20 hooker, calm, and, and, uh, and Ethan all week was throwing a little bit wobbly, but worked really hard. And by the end of the week, he was confident and, and Lauren. Um, Whiteley done some great work with him, and and, and he threw pretty well for a for a, and a kid under that pressure. He was he was had a big smile on his face in the change room. Um, so it's great. There's a there's a birth of of Ethan Bester at this level. Big kid, big hook, big good hooker, and uh, he's just going to go from strength to strength now. The fact is, you have to play another hundred minutes now at altitude, like you just mentioned. That was a physical game. How much of the effect do you think we'll have on your game next week? How much of the effect will have? Oh, I think, yeah. I mean, we'll just, it'll be the next 48 hours that'll be the crucial. I mean, we'll go back and celebrate and have a couple of beers, but we'll um, we'll make sure that we do all the right things tomorrow and the next day and um, and get them back. Uh, it might be quite good for them, actually. 100 minutes up here, we'll be breathing some, might be setting up nicely for next week, you know. So, yeah, I said to Andre yesterday, uh, Andre, Andre yesterday in this chamber, and the plan was to give him 50 50, you know, 50 this week and 50 next week, but now he's got 100 in. So you know, he, he's going to get a, he's probably going to get 180 in his first couple of games back, which is not ideal, but um, yeah, um, we'll just we'll just make sure we nail our recovery and take it easy on this this week, know what we need to know. You mentioned about the red cards, the 20 minute red cards, you weren't sure earlier that season, I think it the Lions had a 20 minute red card, and we were asking about nobody knew what really the situation is. And yeah. also, we were wondering about the speed it up or speed up scrum from the line. So, you know, do you have any idea if that's actually applicable in this tournament? No, I think there's a bit of confusion on the sideline around whether the red card could be replaced. We were asking, and they weren't, they weren't, and then it was only when we phoned our referee 
something out that helps us out back in Durban and said, yes, the red card can be replaced after 20 minutes. And we got that message on and then they said, yes, OK. So there was a there was a lot of confusion on the sideline. And I don't blame the referee for that. I think the officials on the sideline need to be better than that because uh, it added to the stress um, mm-hmm. in that moment. And we didn't know whether we could get Lily um, bested back on. Thank you, mate. Right, we will go to Sam Kelokaga CFM. <coughs> Happy? Uh, just a couple of lines. It's online. Kaga CFM. Okay, no signal. Ashfak? Oh, no signal. Well, um, uh, uh, it's Ashfak Mohamed here in Cape Town. Uh, uh, tremendous spirit from the guys to hold on there with, with, with 12 players at one stage, but. Um, you know, what does the Curry Cup still mean to you, firstly? And then secondly, with the URC prep, I guess you probably couldn't get better prep than this. Yeah, I mean, it means a lot to the players. It means a lot to all of us. I mean, there's a lot of excitement in the training room to get the opportunity uh, to win another Curry Cup um, in our history at the Union. Um, you know, I haven't been there for since 2018. I, I think well, maybe, I can't remember, maybe it was, I, don't, I can't remember actually when the, when the, when the, Sharks last competed for the Curry Cup, um, but yeah, to get that opportunity again, we you know is a privilege. Um, and is it good for the URC? Yeah, it was tough rugby. It's hard on us. It'll harden us. Um, but yeah, we've just got to make sure that we we don't get too many more injuries. There's a pretty lot of sore bodies in there, and I've got to be able to have, take twenty eight players to um, Ireland to play Connacht, and I'm hoping that we've got twenty eight standing after the final next week. Cheers, thank you. Cool, thanks, Ashwak. Warren? Hi, John. Congrats on the win. I'm just, is there any specific injury concerns after that game? Uh, Emil van Heerden um, has an issue with his shoulder. We've got to explore what that is. Um, he couldn't go back out there after halftime. Um, I think he's, uh, he's the main one. Um, was, anyway, we've got one or two. We've got one or two um, cartilage, rib cartilages, but um, hopefully that, that won't be too serious. But yeah, I think Emil's probably the main worry for us at this stage. Thank you. Cool, thanks, Warren. Mariette. <clears throat> All right. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you, coach. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. We'll see you next week.